Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord just one more time. Um, I'm excited about this series that we're about to launch into. Um, for three days, we're going to be in an intensive time of prayer and faith clinic. It's the prayer and faith clinic. I'm going to turn this this way so everybody can see it a little better. Um, the main the main statement I want to I want you to start with and take a look at. It says one of life's greatest tragedies is not prayers that go unanswered, it's the prayers that go unoffered. One of life's greatest tragedies is not the prayers that go unanswered, but the prayers that go unoff unoffered. That is a quote by F. B. Meyer. As you all are coming, if you'll come around this way, we'll see everybody on this side. Um, it's a quote by F.B. Meyer about prayer. Again, that statement is, one of life's greatest tragedies is not prayers that go unanswered, it's the prayers that go unoffered. It is so important that we learn what it means to pray. So with that being said, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight giving you thanks, giving you glory, giving you honor for another opportunity to study your word. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would anoint these lips of clay, that I would be able to speak the oracle of God tonight, Father, that I would be able to declare something that will open the hearts of your people to receive what you would have for us to know in the name of Jesus. We take air superiority right now over every satanic force that would try to hinder or come against what the Spirit of God is going to do. We thank you, Lord, for open hearts, receptive hearts that have come tonight that are ready to receive the word of the living God. Father, I even thank you for our Facebook. I thank you for our Facebook audience, Father, that are watching live all across the world, not just the uh, here locally, but people are watching around the world. And so we thank you, Father, that you are going to minister to them and at the place of their needs as they watch this video, whether they be watching live right now or whether they be watching uh, later on after the video will have been recorded. I ask that you would move and that you would touch in their lives in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let me start here. Let me start here. I find myself a lot of times getting... Uh, talking to people about prayer and ministry, I, I believe I believe that God has given me a special anointing, and especially for this time, to deal with the subject of prayer. And that's because I believe that so many times, especially for those of us who have grown up in uh, the church world, uh, we have had so we've had experiences that have made prayer seem so lofty, seem so high, so unattainable. And the Lord has challenged me to make prayer as simple as possible yeah. for people. Because if it can become simple, it won't seem like as much work. And if it's not as much work, then we're not we don't have as much difficulty wanting to do it. Amen. I want to start in Matthew chapter 6. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Let's go there first. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. You'll come this way for me, brother. And you all know that's one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to dealing with prayer. Look at verse number 5. Now, Jesus has been doing all this teaching and now at verse number five, he's teaching on prayer. Now, I don't think we can get any better than listening to our Savior talk about prayer, huh? He says something. He says, and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they can be seen of men. Now, the evidence of whether you really have a prayer life it's not in what you and what people see in public. It's what manifests from your private prayer life that proves when you, whether you really got a prayer life at all. Because yes. <laughs> you can pray all day. Well, thank God for the Bingham family coming in. God bless y'all. Glad to see you. Um, the proof of whether you really have a prayer life 
is evidenced by what happens in your private time. What comes out of your private time with God? You can stand up here all day and pray and, ah, God, we need you to move. God, we need you to touch. God, we need you. And ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand, that's not where prayer begins. The beginnings of prayer happen in your personal time with God. See? It happens in your personal time with God. So here's the question. What does your personal prayer time look like? Yeah. Zion, take a self-examination. And I want this to be so simple that even our children that are in, I'm so glad that we've got children in the room tonight who are able to see and hear. Jazz, if you'll keep your eye on that for me, if you don't mind, thank you. Uh, we've got children. Y'all come on up. Y'all have to sit all the way in the back. Welcome. Come on in. Okay, you're good. All right. Uh, I, I want our children to even get this because Judges chapter 2 verse number 10 says something very profound. Judges chapter 2 verse 10 says that after Joshua and his generation died, there arose a generation that did not know God and did not know his mighty works. Can we attest tonight that that's pretty much where the church world is right now? That we've got a generation of people who really don't know the power of God? Amen. A lot of our mothers and fathers in Zion have gone on to be with the Lord or they're, you know, they're beginning their transition. And this next generation does not know the power of the Lord. They don't know the power of prayer because we've not deposited it into them. Oh, God. What has happened to many of us is we see the body of Christ has become so engaged in our personal lives. We're all on this side, Mama Tita. Uh, we become so engaged in our personal lives that we struggle with prayer. So our children don't see us pray. So how are they going to know the power when they don't see us operating in the power? Yeah. So look at Matthew chapter 6. Verse 5, it says, and when you pray, don't do like the hypocrites, because they love to pray and be seen. The goal is not to be seen. The goal is not to be, uh, to, 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 to get the approval of men in the way you pray. The goal is to have something behind the scenes. Something behind the scenes that, oh God, help me to teach this Holy Spirit. It says, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. When you, when all you can do is pray in public and get approval of people, oh, that man sure can pray. That woman sure can pray. You're not accomplishing much. You got your reward. The approval was your reward. But when you have a heart for God, can I show y'all the secret? Jump over. Let's see. First Kings. Let me get my scripture here. First Kings. First Kings. Chapter number 18. Now, keep your finger at keep your finger at Matthew. We're gonna come back to that, but I want to show you something. First Kings chapter number eighteen. Verse thirty six and thirty seven. I'm gonna give you the quick background of the text, and then we're gonna look at what happened. In 1 Kings chapter number 18, we know the story. Many of you that have been in church, you know the story that Elijah the prophet was up against the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove. They were up, he was up against false prophets. And he tells them, he said, we're going to have a showdown to see whose God is really God. And so Elijah says, go get you know, the sacrifice, go, let's create an altar. And the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Now, the Bible says that the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove, they danced around, they screamed, they hollered, they did all the formalities to get their God's attention. But their God did not answer. Just stay with me for a moment. But then the Bible, look at verse 36 and 37 of chapter 18. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, and said, 
Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. And I've done these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are God, that you are the Lord God, and that, that, and that you have turned their heart back again. Now, why did I bring that text up? Because here's what I want you to see. Did Elijah pray a long prayer? Talk to me. He did not pray a long prayer. Some of your most powerful prayers don't have to be long prayers. They just need to be filled with something that Elijah had. He said, watch this. He says, he says, I, he said, let it be known, God, that I am your servant. Relationship causes you to pray with confidence. Relationship causes you to pray with confidence. Write that down. Relationship is what causes me to pray with confidence. First John chapter 5. Write that text down. First John chapter 5. Verse number 14. One of my favorite scriptures. It'll change your life. It says we have this confidence. This what? Talk, talk back to me. This what? Confidence. confidence. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What did it say? He does what? Let me pause right there. One of the number one lies of the devil is when you pray and you don't see an answer. God must not have heard you. God must not have been listening. God must not have been paying attention. God really isn't, he, he's not really all that attentive to you. The Bible says his ears are open to the prayers of the righteous. He's listening to you. He wants to hear you. So do you think he's going to turn a deaf ear when you pray? Come on now. Let me ask you a question. Which one of you in this room, how many of you have children? Children, grandchildren, something. Which one of you are going to turn a deaf ear to your child when your child needs something from you? I'm talking about really needs something. Are you going to turn a deaf ear for your child? Now, if none of you in this room will turn a deaf ear to your child, what they, and, and wait, let me add this. And you're human. Yeah. You are prone to mess up. You are prone to make mistakes. You are prone to miss the mark. You are not perfect. None of us in here is perfect, right? Amen. But if none of us would turn our ear from our child, what makes you think God is going to turn his ear away from you? When you get something down, when you get that thing down in your heart, every time I pray, God hears. Say that with me. Every time I pray. Every time I pray. God hears me. God hears me. Hallelujah. Whoa! Isn't that exciting? Amen. I didn't say sometimes. I said every time you pray, God hears you. Amen. Every time. But watch this. It says something very specific. It says we have this confidence. That if we ask anything according to his will. Can we work with that for a moment? Again, Elijah prayed out of his confidence, right? His confidence was, I'm your servant, Father. God, I'm your servant. And because I'm your servant, I'm asking you to honor your servant's prayer. And show them that you're God. Anything, watch this, God's will always advances his kingdom. Amen. Always. It's always for the purpose of the advancement of his kingdom. And forgive me, I've got so much rolling around in my, in my spirit tonight, I'm trying to get it all out. But literally, God's will is it's his kingdom being advanced. Amen. Let me show you something. In the book of James, in the book of James, you don't have to turn there. I'm just going to quote it for right now. We'll come back to it later on in the training. But now, in the book of James, it says one of the reasons why we don't get our prayers answered is because our motives are wrong. 
Let me show you. Let me show you something. Many people, when we pray and ask God to give us financial breakthrough, uh-oh, it's going to get tight right here. Many people, when we pray and ask God for financial breakthrough, we ask for financial breakthrough for the purpose of our comfort. That's the reality. Even if you're not asking him for the financial break, you may be asking him to help you pay the KUB bill. Your electric bill, your mortgage, whatever. But isn't that for your comfort? Yeah, At the end of the day, because yeah. you have you need a place to stay, you need your lights on, it's for your comfort. And I'm not saying we don't have need of those things, but I'm saying we ask those things because we want our comfort. So it means many times our motives are off. I don't want to just have, watch this now. We got to get to the point where we start asking for money from God. When we, have, when we believe in God to release finances, we're believing for it. So we're not just always looking for just enough to get by. Amen. Amen. Uh-oh. But looking for enough that I can become a distributor of finances to help the kingdom be advanced. Which means in the process, I can't be sitting here struggling every week or every month to figure out how I'm going to pay my bills. See, when, oh Lord, when you develop a confidence in your relationship with God, you don't even have to really struggle with that. You just say, God, I thank you. Yeah. All of my needs are met. Yeah. I trust you. My needs are met and I've got more coming. Yeah. Abundance above all I ask or think. Amen. 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 You can get that confidence, but it comes from, again, Relationship. Elisha said, I am your what? Servant. But can I bless y'all real good tonight? Y'all ready? Yes. You are not just God's servant. Yes. Ow! Yes. I wish y'all would have got happy with me like I got happy right there. I said, you are not just God's servant. Yes. Say that with me. I am not. I am not just God's servant. Just God's servant. Preacher, you, you, you become heretical. No, I didn't, I didn't say anything heretical. No, I'm, I'm not a heretic. I say I'm not just his servant. I'm a son. Amen. Hello. Amen. I am a son of God. You are a son of beloved. Now are we the sons of Isn't that what the book yes. says? Amen. We are the sons of God. Doesn't that change the way you pray when you start to realize you're his son? You're his child? Wouldn't that change the way you pray when you start to get that in your mind? I am God's child. I'm not just a servant. I'm his child. There are privileges and rights that come to the sons that don't come to the servants. Amen. Woo! There are privileges and rights that come to the sons that don't come to the service. So you ought to thank God right now that you're a son. Amen. The mysteries of the operation of the kingdom are not given to the servants. Y'all missed it. I'm, I'm going to come back to the service in just a second. But the mysteries of the way the kingdom operates is not given to the servants. It's given to the sons. Bill Gates, if he had children, mm -hmm. I don't know if he does or doesn't. I'm, you know, but Bill Gates got the, he's responsible to show him, he doesn't show his any and everybody everything about his company. That's right. But those that are in covenant with him are the ones that get mm -hmm. the information. Amen. Relationship. Relationship. Everything I'm going to teach you these next three nights, well, tonight, tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday, will be about relationship. Because if you can cultivate relationship, your prayer life is going to go through the roof. Yes, Lord. Do y'all hear me? Yes. Your prayer life will literally go through the roof if you can cultivate relationship. Look at number three. I'm going to come back to the other two, but look at number three. Prayer will yield greater results when it is a daily act of what? Love. For most of us, prayer is not a priority. It's not. For most of us, prayer is our religious act. Mm 
Because I know I'm supposed to pray. Because I'm a Christian. Because I'm a Christian, I know I'm supposed to pray. Uh -huh. So I'm going to pray. Uh -huh. I'm going to ride my car, and, and I, I, I'll show you. I'll show you. Sometimes, have any of you ever been in a place where you woke up one morning and you forgot to say your, God, I thank you for waking me up, prayer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> any of y'all ever been there, you, you, forgot, oh, yeah. you forgot to pray that prayer? So you're rushing out, you're putting your clothes on, you're jumping yeah. in the shower, you're doing all this, and you get in your car, you're on your way to work. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to say, Lord, good morning. Yeah. So you get in your mind, okay, because I forgot to say, Lord, good morning. Let me, uh, Father, you're driving to work, and you're trying to keep from cussing somebody out on the road because they're about to cut you off. And you say, God, I, I want to thank you for another day. I thank you. I'm alive. Thank you for help. I, I, forgot to, I forgot to say thank you this morning for waking me up. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> been there. Look, can I be honest with y'all? I'm a preacher and I've been there and done that. Okay? So don't, don't think it's just you. It, it's all of us. We have those moments. But there's a problem with that. It should not be just an, oh, I forgot. Because I'm supposed to. Yes. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Where we got to get to, we got to work our way to, is I love you, God. Yes, yes, yes Lord. When it, <laughs> let me talk to the ladies in the room for a minute. Y'all like it when your husband, significant other, boyfriend, if y'all dating, getting ready to get married, whatever. You like it when they send you that text message and say, good morning, baby, I'm thinking about you. Right. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> you like it when they when they pick up the phone and call. Some of y'all don't like the text message. Y'all get mad when they text you. Don't be texting me. <laughs> but, but the fact is, the goal is that he's not calling you because he wants something. He's not calling you because he forgot to call you. He's calling you because he wants to hear your voice. Isn't there something, isn't there something special that happens in a relationship when you just want to hear that person's voice and they just want to hear your voice? Can I tell you all a secret? God wants to hear your voice. There are billions of voices all over this world. And yet your God, your heavenly father, loves you so much that whenever you say, hey, daddy, he hears you. And his ear goes, Shoo. that's my baby talking to me. Let that sink in for a moment. Prayer will yield greater results. When it is an act of what? Love. Love. Mm. Not because I want something. Not because I need stuff. I just want to talk to you because I love you. Yes. Amen. Now can I can I drop can I drop a good nugget right here? If you talk to him regularly out of your love for him. Not just because you need something or when you want something, but when you do need something. Mm -hmm. When you do need something. Because you've got the love relationship there. Are y'all feeling me tonight? Because that love relationship is there. It's not just I'm after you because you can do something for me. I'm after you because you're my father and I just love you. Amen. Thank you. I'm after you because I want your heart. The Bible says it like this. No good thing. Oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody ought to praise him on that. Not one good thing will he hold back from anybody who walks uprightly. Well, I haven't been totally upright. I've missed the mark. Do you keep coming to it? Yes. Yes. Does something in your heart still convict you when you miss the mark? Yes. Guess what? He still counts you as righteous. Yes, that's right. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Can you ever be bad enough for him to throw you away? No. I mean, the book says he's married to the backslide. Yes. Uh -huh. Can you ever be bad enough for him to throw you away, Sister Rosalind? 
No. Well, let me ask you a question. Can you ever be good enough to meet up to his standards? No. I want, I want that to sink in for a moment. I'm laying foundation tonight. Tonight's just foundational stuff. We're going to go deeper tomorrow. But can you ever be good enough to deserve anything that he's going to do? No. You know what that means? This will take the pressure. I, I feel it down in my heart right now. This is going to take the pressure off of some of you in this room to feel like you've got to be perfect. You've got to dot every I and cross every T in order for God to hear you and to answer your prayers and for him to be willing to hear you. I, I'm trying to take the pressure off of somebody. Am I, am I saying live in sin? No. No. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying practice sin as a lifestyle. Please don't misunderstand me. But the Bible says if any man sins, yes. he has an advocate with the yes. Father, who is Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ is standing in for you, making intercession for you. So when you miss the mark, he says, God, he says, Father, don't charge it to their, don't yes. charge it to their charge. He said, charge it to my blood. Hallelujah. Thank yes, you, Lord, Lord, for your blood. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> He said, charge it to my blood. My blood washed that away. And if you will confess it and just give it to him, guess what? He washed it up. The book does not say your sins have been covered. Y'all, yeah. somebody should have praised him on that. Uh -huh. yeah. that book did not, this one right here, when I say the book, this is what I'm talking about. This book did not say your sins have been covered. This book says your sins by the blood of the Lamb have been completely annihilated and washed away. Which now, according to the book of Hebrews, gives you access to the throne room of God. You are not just a servant. You are a son. You are a blood-bought son, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Calm down on your teaching tonight. Right there, right there. My sins. Somebody say that my sins have been washed away. My, my sins have been washed away. That means you now have access to the throne room. You've been bought with a price. You are now his. He is now yours. And it, uh oh, let me show you. The Bible says that you are a joint heir with Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I can never be equal. You are a joint heir positionally with Jesus Christ. Yeah, seated true. with him. Thank you. That's what the book says now. I'm not talking outside the book. You're yeah. seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. But you've got to begin to acknowledge that I am a son of God. Yes, I am. Is this helping somebody so far? Yes. Because I'm trying to get you out of a religious mindset of praying. That's not what activates heaven. Yes. Sonship activates heaven. Yes. That's a good point to write down. Sonship activates heaven. And imagine what would happen if who you really are ever connected with who you know you are. Let me say that again. Imagine what would happen in your life if who you really are ever connected to who you know that you are. Because the fact that you are born of God, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, makes your son of God, right? That's here. That's here. Right? In your heart. Down on the inside. But the problem is, the reason why we don't pray with confidence is because there's a disconnect between what we know and what we, what we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. You feel me? Amen. In other words, let me put it like this. I am a son, but I don't know the rights and privileges that come with being a son. So I don't operate in the rights and privileges that come with being a son. And until I get to, when, when I get to know those things, then I start living based on what has Amen. been put inside me. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You walk different. Amen. Yes, sir. You talk different. 
I was sharing with our church, for those of you that are not a part of our church, the Lord recently blessed me with a vehicle. I needed a vehicle. I didn't just want one. I needed one. They'll tell you, I travel all the time. So I needed a reliable vehicle. When I walked into the dealership, now, technically, my credit score is on the rise right now. God is blessing me that it's beginning to rise and come up from where it was. It was, whoo. Yes, Lord. When I first moved to Knoxville, my credit score was, whoo. But by faith, watch this, by diligence, and by obeying even natural principles as well as spiritual principles, God has caused my credit score to run. But it still was not at the level that would allow me to get the things that I wanted or needed in a car. Without putting myself in debt again with 15, 20, 21 percent interest. Hello. But because I have relationship and there's a connection here with what's in here. Now I'm not saying I got it all together. That's why we're all here together right now. But there's some things I've tapped into. When I sat down at the table, watch this. I sat down not as a beggar, but as a son. I walked in not as a beggar. I wasn't begging them to do stuff for me. I walked in as a son of God with an expectation that when I walked out of that dealership, I was walking out with what I needed. came back, told me, oh, we can't get you under $400 a month and blah, 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 blah. I, listen, I'm going to tell you, I wasn't rude. I wasn't disrespectful. I said, go back and get this number. If you can get me around this number, then I'll sign the papers. He said, I can't do it. I said, yes, you can. Yes, sir. Yes, you can. Yes, sir. I just, because it was in my spirit. Because I had already prayed and I had already trusted God that what I need, my needs are met. Watch what I say earlier. See, I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I just put something in there. No, I said, God's will is to advance his kingdom. I need my vehicle so I could be on the road to minister this kind of message to people all across the country. So because of that, I needed something safe, something reliable. So that was a part of accessing the kingdom and progressing the kingdom. It wasn't just about me trying to get a car so I can look good. I didn't get it because I wanted to look good. There was a need. And the man came back. He said, well, I don't know how we, we, it was able to work out, but we got this and this and this and this. And he said, the range where you want it. He said, well, it's a little bit more than what you want. He said, but what we'll do is we'll take our normal five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. We're going to go ahead and up that to a 10-year, 100,000-mile bumper-to-bumper. Yeah, but when, when, when it's right, yes. Yes. 
the time you spend intimately with the person, and I'm not talking about physical act, but the time you spend with that person, it develops a trust. The more time you spend with God, the more you develop a trust in him. My challenge, even to the children, I want to challenge y'all to get to a place where you say, I'm going to go spend some time with God. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. I want to challenge you to just say, I'm going to spend. You know what I used to do as I was coming up in the ranks? I would go, we had a place called the Riverwalk down in Jacksonville. I would go down to the Riverwalk and I would say, today, Lord, I'm just walking with you. I don't really want anything. I'm not going to ask you for anything. I just want to walk and spend time with you. Now, people would think I was crazy. And I wouldn't walk around talking to myself. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> or if I did, I'd mumble under my breath. But I wouldn't, you know. But my point is, I had purpose within myself. I'm going to just go walk. I would sometimes go walk the mall by myself and say, God, I'm walking the mall today with you. This is my time with you. And when I would walk the mall, I just I, I would start thinking about how much I loved him. Woo! I would start thinking about how amazing he is. If you really want to really think about how amazing he is, just look around. Lord have mercy. You really want to start to think about how amazing your God is? Look outside right now. Everybody just look out that window. Do y'all see trees? Well, guess what? You don't just see one type. Amen. Are y'all seeing this? There's not just one type of tree out there. Make sure the camera stays together. There's not just one type of tree. There are multiple trees outside right now that your God created. Yes. I know this is simple, but it's, 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 it's to show you how awesome your God is. If your God is big enough to make those trees out there and make different trees out there, how awesome is he? Isn't that enough to make you just walk down the street and just start just thinking and thinking? When you see them, I know some of y'all are scared of bugs. But when you see a bumblebee fly by, why are you running? <laughs> why are you trying to shoot at him? Stop for a moment and give God praise. Why am I giving him praise? Because he set up the bumblebee to go pollinate the plants. Oh, God. I, I'm, I'm trying to behave, y'all, but I really feel something down in my belly. Because... I, I, I've been looking lately, and it must be bumblebee season. Because everywhere I've been going, there have been a lot of those big old bumblebees. Do y'all not know that aerodynamically those bumblebees are not supposed to be able to fly? Their wings are not big enough for them to support for them supposedly to be able to fly. Scientists have proven it. They're not supposed to be able to fly. But because of the hand of the almighty God, the impossible is possible in the life of a bumblebee. If it's possible in the life of a bumblebee, what do you think it is for a son? Somebody, listen, do me a favor. Just holler, the impossible is possible. The impossible is possible. Yes. You don't believe it, just go look at a bumblebee. Uh-huh. <laughs> a bumblebee is proof that the impossible is possible. That's right. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Okay. I'm trying to behave, y'all, but I feel something happening up in here. The impossible is possible for you. Yes. You know, if we started to believe that the impossible was possible, we start asking for bigger things. Yes. Mm-hmm. My Lord. My Lord. <clears throat> yes, Lord. One of your family members got cancer. So tell me why, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're afraid to ask God to heal the cancer. Uh-oh, I'm going to get in trouble right here. So what we'll do 
is we'll pray prayers like this. Lord, if it's your will. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> And I mean, I understand why we do it. Sometimes it's comfortable because, watch this, it keeps us from feeling like we fail. Mm, yes. Maybe my faith isn't big enough to ask God for this. Maybe I'm not, my faith isn't strong enough to ask God. Listen, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and say, be removed and cast it yes. and it will be removed. Yes. Amen. I'm looking. Last year, Kingdom Life knows, last year I came back and testified there were at least 11 cancers that were doctor verified, healed as a result of laying hands on them and praying the prayer of faith. At least 11 last year. Amen. Can I tell y'all something? I'm not satisfied. I want to see more cancers here. Can I be honest? I won't be satisfied until I lay, until I speak to a dead body until hey, a dead body hey, gets up to me. Yeah. 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 I mean, if a book says I can do it. Amen. Back when I was about 19 or 20, I did it with another preacher. A man got in, we got in a car accident. He flipped out the car. He was laying there dead. The nurse checked his pulse three times. He was dead. We spoke and called the man back to life so in the name of Jesus. We call you back into your body. A few moments later, the body jolted. We thought that it was him jolting because he was taking his last breath to die. No, that's not what it was. His spirit came back into him. When the ambulance got there, the man was alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Now, if 19 or 20 years old, I saw that happen, I'm 41 now. I got to as the heathens do. Don't use vain repetitions as the heathens do. Now, in that day, that was a custom thing that they would pray and they would say, re repeat statements over and over and over and over and over again. You know, they would repeat stuff. Now, this is very different from asking God for something a second time. I'm talking about just repeating stuff to be repeated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you. This is going to get a little tough. In your prayer between now and tomorrow, do not use any religious cliches that you have heard anybody else say. Because that's what we do. I found you to be a mother for the motherless. You're a father for the fathers. A friend for the... Don't we use those cliches? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> You're a burden bearer. Yeah. You a heavy load sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> See, heart regulator. <laughs> See, everybody in here, most of y'all knew yeah. what was coming next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't make your prayer any more powerful. Yes. Uh, come on, brother. That's Amen. Amen. Hey. <laughs> Look at number two. Prayer will yield greater results when we engage our minds more and our emotions less. Now, I'm going to hit that on twofold. I'm going to start with where I am right now, then I'm going to move a little further into that. Prayer will yield greater results when we engage our what? 
minds. Talk back to me. I, I see my children come day. Hey, come on up here with me. Uh, prayer will do what? It's gonna, it's gonna yield great results when you do what? Engage. When you do what? Engage your mind. Minds. That means you gotta think. If we take out all the religious cliches that we know, mm -hmm. it will now force us to speak of God from our own mind and our own psyche. Yes. yes. You don't want anybody to walk up to you and uh, let, me, let, me, let me do it like this. You don't want somebody giving you roses of red, violets, or blue every day, do you? Mm -mm. If your significant other walked up to you and was trying to be sweet to you and said, most of the red, violets of blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. And they did every single Wouldn't that get on your nerves? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because you will sooner or later recognize that that is not necessarily coming from their heart. This is something they heard. So you would say to them, go get something that came from your heart. Right. That's good. That's good one. Am I making sense to y'all? Yes. yes. You don't want to hear don't want to hear somebody talk like that, do you? Mm -hmm. But we but we do it when we go in prayer. That's awesome. Come on, brother. Can I help you? Yes, sir. Make yeah. prayer conversational. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Do you know you can heal more when your prayers are conversational mm -hmm. than you can when they're religious? Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, we got formulas and all this other stuff. And, I, and don't get me wrong. There are, there are principles, biblical principles, and we're going to talk about some of those principles that will help you to, to, to see your prayers answered. I get that. But we got to learn to make our conversation with God conversational. You're talking to your father. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. You are talking to who? Your father. He's not just somebody out there. He is your father. father. Do you walk up to your daddy and say, Daddy, you are the great one. You are so and so. I mean, you just start doing all this stuff. Do you walk up to them and just do all that all the time? I mean, you, you respect them, but you don't walk in with all these formalities and, and you are the you are the head and the CEO of the company and you are uh, the best driver in the world. And you come on now, we don't we don't do that. When you want to go to daddy, you go and you just jump in daddy's arms. When you want to talk to daddy, you just walk up to daddy and you just start talking. Hey, daddy, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? And daddy says, yep. Now, I know not all earthly fathers did that, but I'm talking about that one. Amen. We have this confidence that we have to get anything according to his will. He what? Hears us. He's listening. He is listening. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Yes, yes. I was talking to somebody recently. Take a little rabbit trail, but we'll come back. I was talking to somebody recently, Sister Roz, and we were talking about children. And they were saying, pray for my children. Pray for my children. Pray for my children. And I mean, I want my children saying, I said, listen, let me help you. I said, talk to daddy about your children and leave it there. I said, and I gave, I said, let me tell you what I do. I have made a declaration over my children. Not one of my children will leave this earth without serving the Lord. Amen. Period. That's right. Lord. Hello. Amen. 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 Not one of my children is going to leave this world without serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. Period. They can try to go left. Right. They can try to go right. They can try to go up. They can try to go down. Guess what? Come back. Sooner or later, because of my declaration Whoa. that is according to his will. Yes, Hello. Because the Bible says it's not his will that any should what? Perish. So that includes my children. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, because I have that confidence Amen. in my relationship with him, that whatever he's got to do to get my children, he's going to do it. And I have to tell him so. Uh oh, let me help the parent right here. I have to tell him sometimes, God, I'm gonna get out of your way. Amen. Well, we don't want our children to go through anything. Uh huh. So we get in the way. Well, God says, just give them to me and trust that when I say something, I'm gonna do it. Right. Amen. Woo. Amen. Relationship is what builds your. Trust. 
so here we are. I, I, I said, prayer will heal greater results when we engage what? Our minds more. Lord, help me to think when I yes, pray. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. yes. Help me to yes. think when I pray. Yes. I need to think when I pray. Yes. Sometimes, you know, traditionally in the African American church, we feel like we're not spiritual because we, if, if you write prayers down. Hmm. Seriously. Like, I, I, I'm just being honest. We, you know, and I know I've got people around the world that are watching. Traditionally, in the African American church, you see somebody get up and start reading a prayer from a book. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, you can feel it all over the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, really? they ain't got no prayer. Excuse my English, y'all. They ain't got no prayer life. They can't pray their own prayers. <laughs> but sometimes, what's written in a book may articulate better. Uh -huh. What you're trying to get out. Okay. Now the question is, is what's written coming from your heart? Uh -huh. Does it match what's in your heart at that moment? If it is, and if it does, then guess what? It's okay. God understands. Yes. Amen. Not one of us in here, watch this, not one of us in here has just one method of communication. Not one of us. If you really need to get something across, those hands start flying. <laughs> Am I talking right? Yeah. Hands go up. Let me tell you something. You know, all that. If we, need, if we really need to express something, if, if somebody's gotten on our nerves, I can say a word to them. <laughs> my whole posture just told you somebody got on my nerves. Right. So we have multiple means of communication. Yeah. So stop limiting yourself in the ways you communicate with your father. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Engage your mind. Engage your mind. Engage your mind. Use your mind. Think when you pray. Amen. It's okay. Amen. <laughs> it's okay to think when you pray. Can I give you something else? It's okay to write down before you go in prayer what you want to pray about. Amen. How many of y'all in here can testify that you don't always remember everything you try to remember? Amen. In your everyday life, you don't always remember everything you try to remember. <laughs> Sometimes you get to talking to somebody and you say, what was I saying now? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you know you do it when you pray. Yeah. You get through and say amen, and you're like, oh, I forgot to say that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here's my point. It's okay to write down what you want to pray about. As, as things happen during the course of your day, it's okay to write them down. Amen. And that way you can go back to the Father with those things and pray about them. It's okay. Somebody say, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Now, let me work... Now, I worked the first half of that about engaging your mind more, but let me work the second half. Engaging your emotions less. Hmm. Help me, Holy Spirit. Most of us are moved by our circumstances more than we're moved by faith. Can we be honest? Amen. Can everybody in here be honest? Have an honest moment and say, yes. most of the time, I'm moved more by my emotions than I am by yes. my faith. Amen. I love God. I love Him genuinely. But many times, I'm moved by my emotions. Yes. I'll prove it. Because let something happen. Mm -hmm. We will literally go to God crying, kicking, screaming, God, <laughs> And we will get everybody on the prayer line. <laughs> yes. yes. But we don't we don't do that when we don't necessarily have a need, do we? Mm -hmm. We're not that intense when we have a need when we don't have a need. Our emotions, watch this. Just because you uh oh, this is for somebody right here. Just because you get emotional does not mean you're moving by faith. Uh-huh. Yes. Amen. You crying. Oh, oh God, my life's about to get cut off. Oh, oh. Is it really your faith? 
faith? Really? You're emotional. Oh God, this is happening to my family. Watch this. You're going to God many times as your last resort. Uh -huh. Right there. Rather than as your priority. Amen. Family stuff has been going on. You tried to rectify it yourself. And then when it got to emergency status, then we come. Hello, somebody. Amen. Don't put me out there by myself. When it got to emergency status, then we went in. Amen. Oh God, I need to talk to you, God. I need you. Amen. We are so emotionally driven. Now listen, I'm not telling you not to feel. Let me be clear. If God did not want you to feel, he would not have given you emotions. Amen. And, and I know a good portion of the Bingham family is here tonight, and they've recently walked through a number of passings in their family. Yes. And, and, and I've said to them multiple times, feel everything you got to feel. Mm -hmm. But tonight, I'm not just talking to y'all. There are some others who are sitting in this room and those who are watching online right now who they... Because, the, oh Lord Jesus, because the religious world has taught them Come on. that you are not operating in faith because you feel stuff, Come on. because you shed tears. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. You are human. He built you to feel. Let me just drop a quick nugget and I'm going to keep moving very quickly. If you lost all five of your natural senses, touch, smell, taste, hearing, what's that last one? Feeling. If you lost all of what well, touch is, is, is yeah, y'all know, y'all know five I'm talking about. Smell, hearing, sight. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> it's all right to laugh. Touch, taste, see, hearing, smell. If you lost all five of those, do you not know you would you would lose sight of the fact that you're in the natural world? You would not know that you were in this world if you lost all five. Amen. So what are you saying? If you, if your emotion, your emo, excuse me, your natural things, your hands, your, your nose, your eyes, keep you connected with the natural world. Mm -hmm. Your emotions keep you connected to the realm of decision. Mm -hmm. You want me to prove it? Some of y'all wouldn't have walked away from some folks if you had never got hurt. Amen. Hello. Amen. 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 You would have never walked away Amen. if you had not been hurt. Amen. Now, if you didn't feel pain and you were oblivious to pain, you would have probably still been right there. But my point is this. God gave you your senses on purpose. He gave you your emotions on purpose so that you can feel and it can help you make decisions. But you cannot be governed by your emotions. Amen. Amen. Your emotions can't govern the way you pray and why you pray. Amen. Let me let me go to Jesus for a minute. Matt, write this text. Write, write this text down. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. This is a powerful text. This is a powerful text. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Is anybody getting something out of this tonight? Is this yeah. helping somebody? Yeah. Jesus is praying. He says, Father, if there's any way possible, yes. let this cup yes. pass through me. Meaning he was about to die. Mm -hmm. Right? In the garden, he's dealing with the pain of he's about to die. He says, if there's any way possible. In other, watch this. What he still said was, I submit to your will. If there's any way possible, let this cup pass you. I'd rather not have to go through this. Mm. Let me tell you something. There are some things in your life you'd really rather not have to go through. Amen. This is going to help somebody right here. Not always will the will of God line up with the thing you desire. <laughs> Catch that, please. 
Not always will the will of God line up with the things that you desire. Hallelujah. It's not going to always be what you want. Amen. 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 Sometimes God is going to have to tell you no. Hello. And the traditional church, and the way, especially the way church is now, they act like, well, God, God it's, it's like he's a genie in a bottle. You rub him just right, and you're supposed to get what you want. No, I'm sorry, you cannot manipulate God. His will is his will. Amen. What your desire ought to be is that you can be in his will. Yes. That you want his will. Amen. Jesus prayed, our own Savior. Y'all catch this now. Our own Savior. I mean, God in the flesh. Pray this prayer. If it's possible, let this pass you. Then he says this, not my will, oh, yes. but yours be done. Yours be done. Hallelujah. Now, here's what I want you to see. I told you his will, remember what I said earlier, mm -hmm. God's will is always about advancing the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He could not let Jesus out of the death because the kingdom would not have come. Yes. 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 There's some suffering that you have to walk through. Yes. Job said it like this, man born of a woman of a few days and they yes. are yes. full of trouble. Yes. There is some suffering that you have to walk through. Your faith, your faith is not trained in the absence of struggle. You might want to write that down. My faith is not trained in the absence of struggle. In other words, where there is no struggle, I'm not developing my faith. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I mean, it, 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 if you have all the money you need to pay the bill all the time, you never have to exercise faith to get it because you always got it. Amen. Your faith isn't stressed in the area of finances when you've always got what you need. But let there come a moment where things are a little tight. Hello, somebody. Amen. So your faith is not developed in the absence of struggle. You've got to have a struggle, son. Let me, let me break it down for my kids. Y'all struggle with your homework sometimes? Is it difficult? When you pray and you ask God, Lord, help me with my homework. Give me some wisdom. Open my understanding. Help me to understand. Your faith is developed because you don't always understand your homework. Right? Amen. But can I tell you something? Learn how to pray and ask God to help you. Amen. Learn how to pray and ask Him. He will help. I'm, I know that sounds so simple. Those of y'all that are watching my Facebook, I know that sounds so simple. I'm, I, need, I need even the kids that are in the audience to get this. Because if the kids can get it, surely the grown folks can. Amen. If it's as simple as getting your homework done, asking the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and teach you and show you, help me. And he'll help you. Sometimes he'll send a person to help you. Sometimes he'll just open it up to you. You'll be looking at it. You'll be looking at it all night long. Then all of a sudden, here it comes. Bam! Like, wow, I didn't even... It'll be that simple. But he's that cool like that. He will do that for you. You hear me? Now, Jesus is nevertheless, let me go back to Jesus, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You will, you will de your faith is not developed in the absence of struggle. Amen. If you are a mature believer, you learn how to embrace struggle. Mm -hmm. Oh God, talk Amen. 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 You don't look at struggle as a bad thing, you look at struggle as a blessing. Amen. Because in my struggle, God's teaching me something. I'm going to learn something through whatever struggle I'm facing. Amen. That's how you got to talk. Amen. If you're going to mature, you got to talk. I am going to, listen, I tr I, this is teaching me how to trust God. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Y'all want another nugget real quick? Yes. Stop blaming everything on the devil. That's right. You did it. Amen. Stop blaming everything on the, the devil. You know, that devil so is busy. <laughs> Stop blaming every. Watch this. 
There are some things that are the devil and his angels working against you. There are some things that God is letting you walk through. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then there are some things that are just life. Amen. I wish I had a talk that church right there. Some things are the devil. Some things are God. Some things are just life. Say this with me. Life happens. Life happens. When you find, watch this. Part of your relationship with God that I'm talking about tonight, part of it is asking him to give you grace. The things that are just life, Father, give me the grace to go through them. Give me the grace to walk through them. Give me the grace to walk through them without, without throwing in the towel. Give me the grace to walk through them without giving up. Give me the grace. Watch. I'm going to show you an example of life. Y'all ready? I'm going to give you an example of life. We all know that according to the curse that came under Adam, sickness entered into the world. Uh -huh. Am I in the Bible? Yes. Sickness and even death came into the world, according to the book of Romans, because of Adam's sin. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. So that means as we grow older, our bodies will break down. Uh -huh. Now, in life, you may have a parent who takes ill. Hello? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not because the, not always because the devil did it. Sometimes it's the breakdown of the body. It's life. And every one of us in here, in some capacity, life brings us to changes. Yes. Life will bring you to unexpected changes. Yes. And when it brings you to unexpected changes of things that happen, you got to ask God for grace to deal with those things. It's not your fault that you're going through it. It may not be their fault that they're going through it. It just might be life. Does this make sense? Yes. But can I tell you something? The Bible says God gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. When you're under pressure like that and life is just happening, stuff that's beyond your control, you can't control when the job downsizes. No. That's just life. The devil didn't do it that's right. most of the time. I mean, every now and then he might get in something and mess some stuff up, but I mean, all, all said and done, at the end of the day, generally speaking, that's just life. Amen. So, Father, give me the grace to walk through this season. Yes, See? <laughs> when you begin to pray like that, watch this, when you begin to recognize that some things are just life and you pray and you ask God for grace in that time, you know what he'll do? Give it to you. Amen. And you'll find that even though you may be taking losses, you still have a peace in your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel me? Amen. You may be, I mean, it might be, oh, he'll give you peace to go through. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about a number of members of our ministry right now who are dealing with various things with their families. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about how I'm what they, they didn't think they could get through. It. I'm thinking about first our first lady right there. When, when our bishop first had his stroke, I know for a fact mom didn't think she was going to be able to get through. I call her mom, so y'all just go with me. Mom didn't think she was going to be able to get through. She, she, she had to pray every day, God help me. Am I talking right? Yes. Every day. Even to now, while he's still in recovery, she has to pray, God help me. Yes. And he's given her grace every single day to deal with while he's recovering. Amen. I'm thinking about Minister Lisa and some of the things she's facing with her family right now. I won't get into detail, but I'm thinking about her. And every day God gives grace to her. Amen. Because that's what happens. When life happens, there's yes. grace available. Yes. Well, that's a good praise point right yes. there. When life happens, there's grace available. Yes. Thank you for your grace. There's grace available. Some things, so, so you have to ask God, Lord, give me the grace to go through life. The things that are from you that I have to struggle, I have to suffer a little bit. 
Blessed are they that, that suffer for righteousness' sake. Mm -hmm. So the things that come from you, things that I have to suffer, I have to struggle, God. Okay. The things that I gotta struggle, I gotta suffer. Lord, give me the give me the will and the mind to embrace your will for my life. Amen. Give me grace for life. Yes. Give me the will to embrace what you're doing in my struggle when it's you. Yes. I want to embrace it when it's you. Yes. Oh, let me put it like this. This is going to help you right here. I don't mind feeling the pressure as long as I know it's his hand that's applying. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Anybody with me tonight? Yes. Say that with me. I don't mind feeling the pressure. I don't mind feeling the pressure. As long as I know it's his hand that's applying it. As long as I know it's his hand applying it. I don't mind God putting a squeeze on me sometimes to get some stuff out of me that doesn't need to be in it. Amen. Uh oh. Sometimes God's going to apply some pressure so you can see what's really in you. You wouldn't know what was in you if you didn't have some pressure get applied. Some of y'all have to believe your own pressure for it. Thank you so wonderful, so sanctimonious, and so hallelujah, sanctified. <laughs> I don't care how good any one of us in this room thinks we are. We will never be good enough for that pressure. Never. Because there's always going to be something down in this flesh. The Bible says it like this. Not one, no good thing dwells in our flesh. So you know what God does? I know, see, y'all said, yes, Lord. I give you my life, Lord. Yes, Lord. Then you do it. How, how many of y'all said? Let me see. Who, who said yes to God? You gave him permission to squeeze you. Amen. Y'all thought it was gonna be all sweet and rose and everything. Oh, God, you can use me. Okay. What good? <laughs> I gotta squeeze some of that hatefulness out of you. I gotta squeeze your bad attitude out of you. I gotta squeeze that last little bit of cuss out of you. Come on, hallelujah. It's alright. I gotta squeeze, watch this. I gotta squeeze fear out. Oh Lord, I'm hitting something right here. Because I wanna take you in the realms and zones that you've never walked in before. I want to take you beyond anything you've ever imagined. But i got to get fear out of you. So i got to squeeze you a little bit right here. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Woo! Yes, God. Hallelujah. Just let me squeeze. Oh, God says, I'm going to squeeze you. But can you embrace his squeeze? Oh, yes, Lord. Now watch this. One of the prayers you have to pray is God... Oh, make my eyes keen. Make my eyes sharp. Open my understanding yeah. so that I can tell the difference between life, uh -huh. your squeeze, and the devil. Amen. 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 Let me give you number three. I, I ask for what? Grace to go through what? Life. life. Uh -huh. I ask to be able to embrace the squeeze of God. Uh -huh. But number three, this stuff that actually is from the devil... God, give me the mind to rebuke that stuff. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do you not know that the Lord will let the devil come up against you? Yes. Come on, Job. Do you not know the Lord will allow the devil to come up against you? Yes. The difference between you and Job, remember what I said, Saturday, uh, Job, he, he didn't have the right mindset. He said, though he slayed me, yet will I trust. It wasn't God slaying Job. That's right. That's right. Pressure can cause you to look at things the wrong way. Amen. But he still had one part right, though he slayed me. Yet will I trust him. Amen. But the difference between us and Job is this, ladies and gentlemen. The devil that wants to come up against you, the Bible declares that hold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing. And over all, wait a minute, let me make sure I get it all right. And over all the power of the... Yes, yes, yes. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. Jesus said, I didn't say a man said, I said, Jesus said, behold, I give you power. To tread upon serpents, 
scorpions, and all I give you power over all the power of the devil. Some of it. Oh. I got two people to talk about. Some of the power of the devil. Oh. But I'm just a baby Christian. Oh. I don't know a whole lot. Oh. Can I tell you a secret? Yes, the devil wants to keep you in not knowing a whole lot. Because if you ever came to realize who you really are, yeah. you would literally walk in the power and say, devil, get out of my way. Yes. Amen. Back up off me. You intimidate the devil. You know why? Oh, Lord Jesus. Do y'all know why the devil didn't want some of y'all to get here tonight? Because if he can keep you ignorant and not knowing or limited in your knowledge, then he, he keeps you from rebuking him. When you... Amen. Watch this. I'm not talking about just saying I rebuke you, devil. I'm talking about doing it with authority. Mm. Awesome. That's that word again. Confidence. Here's another secret, y'all. Watch this. You don't have to ask God to rebuke the devil for you. Amen. That's not biblical. Yes. It is not biblical for you to ask God to rebuke the devil. He gave you the power to do it. Amen. So it's time for you to step up and handle the enemy. Stop being a wimp in his face. Come here, man. Come here. Quick. Come here. Stand right there. Come here, bro. I'm going to show you something. Now, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Turn this one. I'm going to show you something. I think they got to see from that way. So you got to bring it. There we go. All right. Now, you're going to be the devil. Okay? <laughs> and I deliberately got a young man mm, yeah, yeah. to do this. Come on. Because I want you to see something. Now let me whisper what he needs to do. Okay? And I'm going to tell him what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. Now, pay attention. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, thank you, Jesus. Come at you. You say, I will beat you, devil. Bow up off you or something like that, okay? In the name of Jesus. Come on. All right, you ready? I Come on. You devil. I'll rebuke you, devil. Back up off me. Jesus. What you got to tell me? It ain't working. I'll rebuke you. Get back. Hey! Come on, come on. Do y'all hear what he's saying? Wait, 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 wait. Do y'all hear what the devil's saying? He's telling him it's not working. But every time he says, devil, I rebuke you, he's steady going down, losing power. For your yeah. power. Where? In what? In the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. But look where the enemy is. Put your foot on his back, son. Put your foot on his back. What I'm trying to do. Amen. Amen. Somebody in here needs to understand that the devil is telling you it's not working. But what I need you to understand is the more you walk with the power of God, it's working. It's still working.
I know that was a word for somebody right there. That enemy has been telling you a long time, it's not working. But what you don't realize is while he's telling you it's not working, he's trying to get you to back up off your confession. He's trying to get you to back up off of what you've been speaking. He's trying to get you to back up off Talk to him 
as a son yes. and not as a church goer. Amen. Yeah. 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 Talk to him as a son yeah. and not as a church goer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, I'm going to give you one more point, then we're going to go. When you're in relationship, mm-hmm. say this with me. I don't have to worry. I don't, I don't have, have to, to worry. worry. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest attacks of the devil against believers is the spirit of fear. Uh-huh. Amen. We're afraid it's not going to work. We're afraid it's not going to happen. <laughs> we're, we're afraid. Amen. Amen. And then if things start to look very rough, we get worried. Yes. But Jesus says this in Matthew 6 25. I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Uh-huh. What you will eat or what you will drink. Yeah. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air. They don't sow, nor do they reap. Nor do they gather into barns. Yet your heavenly, huh? Yes. What does it say? Matthew 6, 25, get it. Oh, actually, yeah, 26 now. Get it. Look at it. It says the birds of the air, they don't sow and they don't reap. They don't gather into barns. It says, and yet your heavenly, what? Talk to me. I mean, it's based on what I've been teaching all night. Your heavenly what? Father. Father! Feeds them. Y'all see that? Yes, Lord. So which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. They don't, they just grow. They don't toil. They don't struggle for what they need. Uh Uh-huh. So think about the lilies. They don't struggle. They just have what they need. Mm -hmm. It says, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, verse 30, if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast away, shall he not much more clothe you? Take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. In other words, don't take any worry for what you need. Mm-hmm. It says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, but your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all of them. But look at verse 33, Matthew 6, 33 is where I'm going to close today. But seek first uh-huh. the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be Add them to you. Notice it becomes more effective when it's an act of love. Mm-hmm. When you seek him first because you love him, mm-hmm. you're going to see results. Mm-hmm. Why do you think God's going to take care of the birds and not take care of you? Mm-hmm. Amen. Now, let me show you because it's not enough. This is the last thing. It's not enough for me to tell you that you need to seek him, mm-hmm. it's not enough for me to tell you that you don't need to worry. Because every one of us in here have had moments where worry has slapped us across the head. Oh, yes. Can we all be honest and say that's the truth? Oh, yes. That's the truth. As much as we try, worry still tried to get on us. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the answer. You've got to replace. Watch this. Uh This is going to help you. The human mind is not built. It is not built. To process more than one thought at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now you can have subsequent thoughts. I mean split second. You can think this in one moment and then very next moment think this. In a split second you can do that. But at the exact same time you cannot think. Your brain is not built to think two thoughts at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? What I'm trying to tell you is, since my brain and your brain is not built to think two thoughts at the same time, when the wrong thought tries to come in, Mm -hmm. you now have the opportunity to cancel it out deliberately with the opposite thought. Amen. 
You're going to die early. No, I'm not. I'm going to live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. You're going to be sick for the rest of your life. No, I'm not. He was wounded for my transgressions, yes, bruised for my iniquities, chastised me with my peace of the with the stripes I'm healed. And even if he doesn't heal me on this side, let it be known, like the Hebrew boy said, he's still able and I won't stop trusting him. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. See, it's easy. Worry is going to try and hit you. Well, I just worry. Stop. Listen. Get that out of your vocabulary. Worry should not be in the vocabulary of a believer. Yes. Amen. But I'm human, man. God, I know that. I said worry should not be in the vocabulary of a believer. I mean, you know what the book said? Don't worry about anything. Don't worry. Don't live in fear. God has not given us the spirit. Now, see, we quote that, but we don't believe it. How much of that book do we quote when we really don't walk in? Amen. It's time for us to start. See, when you're a son, you trust daddy's word. Daddy doesn't lie. That's right. So if he said he's going to take care of me, He's going to take care of you. Yeah. Now, let me just throw this out there. Make sure you're operating in wisdom and not put yourself in position where you got to learn lessons. Amen. 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 Make sure you're not putting yourself in positions where you need to go through some stuff. All right now. I mean, come on now. You go spend three hundred dollars at the store and you can pay your light bill, and now you call them God. God, I need you to pay my light bill. Come on, that wasn't wisdom. That's right. So he may very well let you have to struggle to get that money together because you made bad decisions. Right. Amen. Amen. And then you got to work. But God, will, when you operate in the wisdom of God, he will take care of you. Amen. Amen. Was anybody blessed tonight? Anybody get yeah. something to come tonight? Amen. Those of you that are watching my social media, we thank you for, for watching. God bless you. Y'all meet me back here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock online. We want to see you online. God bless you. If you want to sow a seed, please sow a seed into the ministry. You can go to my website, elderlong.com. Down at the bottom, there is a donate button that you can donate. God bless y'all. Good night. All right.